Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Railroad Revolution, which is a new Euro-style economic simulation all about trying to conquer the American West by building the most prestigious, biggest rail network possible. Although in this game, actually, there's an equal focus on building up the Telegraph Road. Um, there's a lot of points to be had for building lines from the East Coast, where we start out over here between Washington and Charlotte, all the way out to the West Coast, uh, connecting San Diego, San Francisco, and Seattle. But there's a ton of points to be had for investing in this new burgeoning Telegraph technology. Uh, you can get a lot of points, a lot of benefits from that. There are also lots of points to be had for building more trains. Each train you build is worth eight points, provided it's still active at the end of the game. Because when you build a train, you can use it for eight points at the end, or you can use it whenever you need it to uh, activate a special ability. Then it gets flipped, and you'll have to reactivate it to make it worth points at the end of the game. So there's points for trains. There's points for telegraph. There's points... Well, there's also points to be had for investing in the three prime um, technologies of the game. Uh, the higher you go up here, the more points your line will be worth, the more points your stations will be worth, and the more points your investment in the, t in the Western Union, the Telegraph, will be worth. And on top of that, everybody gets company milestones, special objectives they are trying to pursue that are worth a lot of points as well. They start out being worth 18, but by the end of the game, if you get up to the high level ones, they can be worth 40 points or more. So. This is a points-heavy game. Lots of stuff you can pursue, lots of options, and uh, I'm going to be doing a two-player run-through today so you can see what it's all about. Now, I've already got the game set up. In a two-player game, some of the first-to-arrive spaces are gone. That means the, you know, the dummy player has already built a, a station in Little Rock, Duluth, Salt Lake City, San Diego, and has also claimed all of these spaces. And uh, because the first player to build in any of these spaces gets a bonus, but there will be no bonus to be had because the dummy player got in first. Well, like I said, we start out over here between Washington and Charlotte, and this is where we can expand from. We start with 600 bucks and three shares in the Telegraph Company in Western Union. We, anytime we need some more money, we can trade these in for 150 bucks. But there are other things we can use these for as well if we hold on to these shares. They can be very, very valuable beyond just their monetary value of 150 bucks. We each start with the same train that allows us, if we use it, to promote two employees which could save us some time if we're in a rush. There's also this particular baron out here, or industrial baron, who wants to get into uh, the telegraph industry. And if, if, when we make deals with this guy, we can give up some of our shares in Western Union to get extra benefits. And there's a whole stack of these. More of them will come out over the course of the game. Last thing. Uh, after we get our starting capital, we get our starting objectives, we have our starting pool of four regular workers who don't have any special abilities. You can see there's a whole bunch of other workers who do have special abilities, accountants and foremen and negotiators and engineers. Um, before we get going, there's one last thing we're going to do. Each player picks a starting bonus. Since I am the first player, Jen gets first dibs. She can take this, which would allow her to train one of her regular employees and turn them into a super employee. That's what this icon means. Plus, she would get an engineer. Or she can take this one, which will give her a, uh, what, her fifth worker will be a foreman, and she can lay one line of track right now for free, which is important because normally it's pretty expensive to lay track. So, which of these two does Jen choose? And then I'll end up with the other one. If there were four players, of course, there'd be four of these out here, but in a two player game, there's just two. Now, looking over Jen's objectives, well, she can see to complete this milestone, she needs a foreman. To this one, she needs an accountant. So she's kind of eyeballing that foreman. Plus, this objective, uh, well, this objective, both of these objectives want her to lay track. Two track on planes or one track in a deal zone. And so, you know, I think Jen's going to take this one. She wants her foreman, plus she will get to now lay one bonus line for free, which normally would cost her a fair bit. And this is where she starts, so she can expand um, from Washington to Boston, from Washington to Chicago, from Charlotte to Little Rock, or from Charlotte to Miami. I think, ah, this is the interesting thing, the more mountains there are, the more expensive it is, and this is free right now. So Jen should probably go like this, 
because that just saved her 300 bucks by getting that build for free. But the interesting thing is, if she looks over here, she wants to lay track on planes, which are normally free. There's no extra cost to lay on those spaces. So she could lay over here and get half of this objective completed. But it's free, well, mostly free to build on planes. So does she take advantage of this and start working on her objective? No, I think she'll build here and save 300 bucks. So now Jen has expanded from Charlotte to Little Rock, which means she can expand further and she could actually build in Little Rock. Although the problem with Little Rock is, since the dummy player is already here, she cannot get the first player bonus for building there. Hmm, all right. Now if Jen's really paying attention, she can say, hey, look at me. I need to build rail lines on the Green Mountains. So, and here's one right here. If Jen wants to block me from being able to get to mine, she could build here like this. Um, you know, it's not helping her uh, because it's, it's not getting her on the planes. It's also not a deal spot. Like the first deal spot would be out here or over here, but it's blocking me from building where I want to build. So I think that's what she's going to do. She built there for free. She saved herself 200 bucks. She's on her way from Washington to Chicago. And if she gets to Chicago quickly, she can get the bonus for being the first to build in Chicago. She wouldn't have gotten the bonus for being the first to build in Little Rock. Okay. That was Jen's free bonus. She took a foreman and she got one line for free. And in the process, well, she kind of slowed me down. I need to get over to these mountains or these mountains or these mountains. All right. Meanwhile, that means she left me an engineer, which is fine because, hey, I need an engineer to complete this milestone. And I can now train one of my, any of my existing workers to take on a different role. So I think I'm going to say sayonara to this normal guy and I'm going to train him to be something. So I could train him to be a foreman because, hey, I need a foreman and I need an engineer. Or, but you know what I think I want more? I think I want an accountant. So I trained a regular guy to be an accountant. Accountants basically make or save you a lot of money. Engineers basically enhance the action you send them to do. Whether it's build stations, expand your rail line, um, you know, uh, build up Western Union telegraph lines, or engage in trade to make more money. If you send an engineer to do any of those actions, they will do a better job than anybody else. If you send an accountant to do any of those actions, they will make extra money or make it cheaper to do it. If you send a foreman or a negotiator to do any of those four main actions, they'll give you some kind of bonus on top of that. And it's different for each one of the actions. Anyway, so I, I'm starting out with an accountant and a foreman or an engineer. Jen's starting out with a foreman and one line already built. She built for free. Right. Setup is done. We are ready to build the railroad revolution. So I am the first player. What am I going to do? On your turn, it's super duper simple. You pick any one of your labor force and you do one of these four core actions. And uh, you potentially get bonuses depending on what type of worker you assign to it. And let's see. I just got my accountant. I think I want my accountant to be my first guy. Because remember, I started with 600 plus what? An additional 450 in shares that I could sell whenever I need it. Just It's not an action. I can just do that anytime I need the money. I, If I look at my objectives, well, I need to build line in the Green Mountains. Jen just blocked me off from that. So I'm going to have to pay attention to that. But uh, for this objective, I need to build a station in a level one city. And I need to build two lines connected to two different level two cities. Level one cities are on the east coast. Level five cities are on the west coast. And then in the, in the middle, we've got level four, level three, and level two cities. I need to connect line to two of these level two cities. And I need to build either in Charlotte, Washington, or Boston. Now, here's the problem. Washington and Charlotte are the two most expensive cities in the world to build stations at. 500 bucks. Compared to that Miami, only 150 are over here in Little Rock, only 200. But I do need to build in a level one city. That's why I think I'm going to have my accountant be the one I'm going to send him over here. He could build. He could, he could be the one responsible for laying track, for telegraph lines, for engaging in trade. But uh-uh. He's going to be the one responsible for my station. What is the bonus I get off of him? I check right here. An accountant, whenever building a station, builds it for free. So since I'm going to build in Charlotte or Washington, this guy just saved me 500 bucks. So let's go on ahead and build. Uh, whenever you build a new station, you take the leftmost available building. And since this is where I started, I can only build in these two spots. And wherever I build, I'm going to get the benefit of being the first person to build there, so I'll get a bonus. 
Now, the bonus I get for building in Charlotte is I get two for being the first one to build in Charlotte. I get two additional shares in the uh, in Western Union, the Telegraph line. Plus, now I'm the only one who gets this. Anybody who builds in Charlotte can get a foreman or an engineer. But since I'd be the first one here, and it would cost 500 bucks normally, but it's free for me, I get basically 300 bucks worth of shares. So Charlotte's paying me to come build here. Now instead, I could come over here to Washington. For being the first person to build in Washington, I can increase two of my investment tracks. So I could say go up one, two. And now, before, any telegraph investment I did or uh, the game is worth nothing, now it's worth two. So that encouraged me to invest a lot in um, Western Union. So I could do that. Plus, uh, for building in Washington, I get a foreman or another accountant. My choice, one or the other. Let's see. Now, the interesting thing is, remember, I need to be aiming on building in these mountains. Jen just took the one I would have liked to build in. If I come here, I could get up to Boston and get up there. And Boston's pretty cheap to build in too. Plus, remember, I need... No, Jen needs to build in a deal, so it's not like I need to build there. So if I come down to Charlotte, I could start heading over to Houston where there's an opportunity, um, you know, it'd be free to build in this plains, 100 to build in this single mountain, 200 to build in this double mountain, and then there's another double mountain, so I could head out this way. Yeah, let's go for Charlotte. Okay, so I'm building in Charlotte. My accountant meant I did not have to pay 500 bucks. I'm the first person here, I get two more shares of Western Union. That's 300 bucks I just made, and I can take a foreman or an engineer. I've already got an engineer, what the heck, let's get a foreman, because I'm gonna need one eventually anyway. That was my turn. I, I did an action. There's a core action plus it benefited because I used one of my special guys. Jen's turn. Let's see what she's going to do. Now, she is starting with only one special guy, a foreman. So she'll probably want to use him to get the most out of him. And what is she going to do? Right. Well, she wants to lay track, of course, because remember, both of her objectives need her to, to, to lay track. Um, so. Plus, she's halfway to Chicago. She'd like to finish the line to Chicago so she could build a station here because being the first to build it here would let her hire an accountant for 200 which isn't as nice as getting an accountant for free. But remember, normally, to build in Washington costs 500 To build in Chicago costs 200 plus another 200 You can spend 400 total and get an accountant. Plus, you're going to, no matter what, for free, every, you know, when, when you build a station in Chicago, you're going to get an engineer. So... Let's see, what does Jen want to do? Well, if she's going to use her foreman, she also has to bear in mind what benefit is she going to get. She'll get to build a station or build line or telegraph or um, you know, make an investment, basically sell some of her company assets to make money. But she will also get one of these benefits for using the foreman. Uh, using a foreman in a station means she could flip her... Um, her train for a hundred bucks, she could flip it, which means she would get to use this bonus action. This bonus action lets her promote her workers. Promoting means you take them out of the regular work pool and you assign them to these milestones. Once they've assigned, you've lost them, but you need to spend the time to promote them or else you'll never finish these for huge points. But Jen doesn't want to promote this guy. She wants to get some use out of him first. So I don't think she wants to build a station because she's not excited about that bonus. If she uses him for building the line, her bonus is she can build, in addition to paying money to build the rail line that she wants to do, she could also spend money to get a second train. Every train you have at the end of the game is worth eight points, provided it's face up. Every time you use it, it goes face down. Now it's not worth points. You have to reactivate it to make it worth points again. So Jen could buy a train for 300. That's not bad. But you know what? If she's the first to build in Denver, she could get a train for 200. If she's the first to build in San Francisco, she could get a train for 100. So, if she uses this foreman to do some, um, some, some telegraph lines, the benefit for the foreman here is she could train one of her other workers to become a special worker, like what I did at the beginning of the game. And if she uses her foreman to, to make some more money by selling off some of her some of her building materials, the benefit she would get is she would be able to move up a total of three on any of the investment tracks that she wants. So, and, and, and that, this is the crux of the game. You're always trying to think of what is the core thing I need to be doing for my objectives or you know, because I've invested in something, but also which worker am I going to use and how am I going to get the most mileage out of that worker? She wants to build rail lines. 
she would get a train for free, or not for free, for 300. That means to build rail lines normally costs 400. To, you, you, when you choose this, you lay down two lines of track. That's going to cost you 400 plus 100 for every mountain. So building is a scene. Where's Jen? This is, there's no mountains here, so that's going to be free. And then if she comes over, well, she could build in, so she could come over here because, remember, she wants to build a line on a, um, on a business space. She could build here and then here. She would have built on a business space and on one of the, oh, wait, no, no, no. Actually, she needs to build on two planes. Yeah, okay. Jen is going to use her form in here. All right. It's going to cost her 400 plus 100 for every mountain. She lays two lines of track. She takes her first one and her second one. And it costs her starting 400. And, oops. Oh, I did not give Jen her starting 600. I gave her, all right. So Jen starts with 600, right? It costs her 400 of her starting 600 to lay these two lines. And it's going to cost her more for mountains. She's going to lay here. There was no, this was planes, and she's going to expand over here. And just like that, Jen has built, um, and it didn't cost her extra because planes are free. Now, all Jen needs is she needs to get an accountant, and then she needs to promote him, i.e. lose him, to complete this and score 18 points. The sooner she does this, though, the sooner she can get a B objective, so she'll have an idea of what she should pursue next. So anyway... Now, because Jen used a foreman, she gets a bonus. She could spend 300 bucks to get a second train. She's only got 200 bucks on hand. She'll spend those two, plus she will trade in uh, shares for 150. 100 of that will go towards the train, which means she gets 50 and change. And now Jen gets to build another train. This one, whenever she activates it, gets her 600. This one, whenever she activates it, lets her move up on the investment track. This one, whenever she activates it, gets her three shares, which may not sound as good as 600 bucks because three shares is only 450 bucks worth of shares. But shares have other uses in addition to money. And this one, if she has it, whenever she activates him, she gets to very quickly build a, um, a, a single train line, expand a line for 100 bucks, but she doesn't have to pay the additional fee for going over the mountains. So if she really wants to build a lot of lines out to the West Coast really quick, this is the train to grab. But you know what? I think Jen just wants to have some more money on hand. She's going to get this train. It costs her 300, but every time she activates this train, it gives her 600. Plus, as long as at the end of the game it's face up, she'll get eight points. So Jen's pretty happy with that. That was her first turn. She has invested in her um, fleet of trains and she has expanded. She's almost done, but she needs to get an accountant. Which, remember, if she's the first to build in Chicago, she can spend 200 bucks and get an accountant. So that might be what she's going for next. Particularly because, remember, she needs to build a station in a level two city like Chicago. So everything's coming up roses for Jen. But now back to me. That was Jen's first turn. My next turn is, right, so. I need to build two lines into two different level two cities. So I probably want to start making some lines here. Um, so I could build a line up here from, I could expand from Washington to Boston. That's a level two city. And I could expand over here to Houston. That's level two city. But this one's going to cost 300 extra bucks. But I will also get to strike a deal. And... Um, the iron is hot. Striking deals means working with these industrial barons, giving them some of our shares in the telegraph line to get bonus actions. I have a lot more shares than Jen does right now. So now is a good time for me to be trying to eyeball a deal to jump in and get more benefit out of it than Jen. Because when the deal happens, everybody gets to partake, potentially. So, do I want to do that? Um... Because like I said, if I lay down a track here and here, well, it's going to cost me 300 extra bucks, but I'll trigger a deal. Now, I don't need to trigger a deal. I don't have an objective for that. But um, a deal is an opportunity to do more actions. Let's see here. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my engineer. Now, remember, engineers, they... Accountants make it cheaper to do whatever you want to do. Engineers make it better. They make you stronger, whatever the core thing is. So I'm going to have this engineer lay some track. And he gets a bonus. His bonus is, instead of only getting to lay two, like what you saw, Jen had to pay 400 to lay two lines. Because I'm having an engineer go, I pay 400 to be able to put down three lines. And that's exactly what I want. I want a line over here and a line here and here. And my engineer is going to let it happen. So first of all, this is going to cost me 400. Ouch. But I'm going to lay three lines instead of two. 
All right, so I will lay. Um, oh, shoot. I can't expand off of gens. I was looking to see this. All right, so I could go here and here. Right. Oh, I totally missed that. I thought that was mine. It's gens. All right. Well, first of all, I know I'm going to do this one. And that cost me an extra 100 because there's a mountain between Washington and Boston. So that cost me an extra 100. And I've got two more. Um, oh, remember, that's right. I need to build in double mountains. So now I can expand from Boston to, towards Duluth. And that gets me one of my two green mountains I have to build in. But that costs me an additional 200. Um, yeah, but I'll do it. So that costs me. And I, I'm going to tr I'm gonna trade in some shares. I'm going to give up two shares. That gets me 300. But I spent 200 of it building in this space. It's tough to build through mountains. And now, hmm, oh, all right, well, all right, I've got one more. I'll just build here. That cost me another 100. And um, now I am connected all the way over here to Duluth. Oh, but that's a problem. Duluth is a level three city. I want to connect to level two cities. So collecting Duluth doesn't really help me. Hold on a second. Let's back these back. Take that 300 back that I just spent on those two. So I've connected to one level two. I want to connect to another level two. So what I could do is I could just go on ahead and build in these spots the same way Jen has. And you know what I mean? I'm still getting on my green mountain. I don't know why I was thinking that. Jen can't block me from building on a green mountain. Forget what I said right up front. Oh, I was feeling pretty, I was pretty silly there. Um, so if I do this, yeah, that only cost me 200. I think I'll just spend 200. And now I've connected to two level two cities and um, I might be the first to build a station in Chicago and take advantage of that. All right, so that's what it was. To re make sure I did this right. I, I paid 400 bucks to build three lines because it was an engineer. And, uh, one of, and that cost me 100, this cost me 200, this didn't cost me anything. And now both Jen and I are connected to Chicago. I'm connected to Boston. I'm connected to two different cities. I built a station to level one. Now all I have to do in a future turn is promote my engineer and I can complete this objective. But that means I will permanently lose my engineer. So that was my turn. And, oh, but the interesting thing is, since I built over here, I did not build in a deal city. So a deal is not going to happen. Right. Okay. So it is now Jen's turn. Hey, everybody. I'm just going to jump in here for a little bit and say if you'd like to watch some more of the Railroad Revolution, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen, go to the extended playthrough, or you can go to Final Thoughts, your choice in five, four, three, two, one.